Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel all about VLSI. In this video, we are going to start with another protocol that is APB protocol. So APB stands for Advanced Peripheral Bus Protocol. Now before going to start this particular APB protocol, I want you all to once revisit the AHB protocol if you haven't. If you have listened all the AHB protocol videos, then it will be a very easy task to understand APB protocol. APB protocol stands for APB stands for advanced peripheral bus. It is a simple low power, low complexity interface protocol used in AMBA based systems for communication with peripheral devices like UART, timers, GPIOs, I2C controllers, etc. These are all your peripherals. Whereas in the case of AHB, it is a high power and high bandwidth and it is a uh, high complex interface. AHB protocol but APB it's a simple peripheral protocol its main agenda is to communicate with the peripherals and APB is not pipelined like AHB or AXA. AXA protocol we haven't discussed in our next series we will discuss about AXA protocol but when we were discussing about AHB protocol we have seen that AHB supports pipeline structure what do you mean by pipeline structure and how we are achieving that pipeline structure and what do you mean by burst transfers these and all things we have discussed in the AHB protocol. So APB is not a pipeline unlike AHB or AXA and is mainly used where performance is not a key concern and but simplicity and low power are critical and especially in memory mapped peripheral registers like for example you are timers or GPIOs etc. And where is APB used? So basically APB is typically connected to an AHB to APB bridge which converts AHB or AXA signals to APB compatible transactions. For example, let's say here is our processor. And let's say if it wants to communicate with some GPIO devices like UART or I2C or SPA, basically these are uh, low frequency or slow peripherals uh, and low powered peripherals. Now here, these are connected with an interface that is nothing but our APB. So these peripherals can be connected with our interfaces like APB and APB cannot be connected directly with your processor. Your processor will be connected with another interface like AHB or AXI and there will be some bridge like design which is going to convert your AHB to APB which is going to convert your AHB to APB. This is what this is how you are going to establish the communication between an AHB interface and APB interface. In this particular course, we are going to learn about this APB protocol. We have already completed this AHB protocol. Now we are going to learn about this APB protocol, how your APB is going to communicate with the, the peripheral devices, etc. And after this completion, we are going to discuss about this particular bridge. So basically this APB is typically connected to an AHB to APB bridge, which converts AHB or AXA signals to APB compatible transactions. The bridge sits between high performance bus and slow speed peripheral devices. So this is where we are going to use a bridge for communication between your AHB and APB. Now let us try to understand what are all the signals which are associated with your APB device. And in AHB protocol also we have started with the discussion of what are all the signals which are associated with your AHB AHB interface and in APB also we are going to learn uh, what are the signals which are associated with your APB interface. Now APB stands for advanced peripheral bus. So we have different type of buses in APB also. The very first thing is P clock. This is our clock signal and the width is one bit and it is a clock input. So we need a different clock right. So we are going to use this clock and if you can notice we are using a letter which is P. P stands for it is a signal which is associated with APB. P stands for it is a signal which is associated with APB. And in AHB and in AHB protocol we have seen the signals uh, like H clock. In AHB we are going to have the signals which H with H. In AHB we have the signals associated with the letter H. But in APB we have the signals associated with the letter P. That means it is a signal which is associated with our uh, APB interface and the main clock for the APB system and all the transfers are synchronous to the rising edge of the clock. AHB protocol and APB protocol both are synchronous protocols and they are synchronized with your clock. The next signal we are going to have, so this is let's say this is our APB interface and for this we are going to have a P clock 
and next we are going to have one more signal which is nothing but p address so from where we are getting the signals so this is our master this is our master interface and this is our slave interface so so for your slave interface all the peripherals will be co connected all the peripherals will be connected to your slave interface and your master interface is basically connected to your bridge this is basically connected to your bridge this bridge is converting all the ahb related signals all the ahb related signals to apb related signals the bridge is basically converting them and master after receiving them it is going to communicate with the slave which is being which is being connected to your peripherals so this is how we are making our communication now coming to another signal which is known as p address so this p address carries the address for the transfer and can be up to 32 bits wide so this p address is basically used for selecting your what type of uh, slave you wanted to communicate because we can have multiple slaves connected to a single master so this p address is used to establish a communication between a single master and whatever the slave it wants to communicate and in ahb protocol also we have seen for the address we have basically two roles first one is selecting your slave and second one is associating address for a single data packet okay that we will discuss again here in our epp protocol also but if you have watched our ahb protocol then you might have seen that for the address we have basically two roles one is for selecting your slave and another is for selecting what type of data or uh, tying up with your data next next we have p rot this is an option signal that we are going not going to discuss in ahb protocol also we haven't discussed about this p rot signal and coming to p select and coming to p rot it, it basically indicates a protection level like normal or privileged or secure or non secure or instruction or data this and all you can explore it later and coming to next signal is p select so basically it is of one bit and it is going to select it is a select line to indicate which slave is selected for the transfer multiple p select signals can exist for multiple slaves for example let's say if we have a single master like this and we have different slaves let's say if the master needs to communicate with this slave too then the master is going to activate the p select signal which is associated with our slave too so the master is going to uh, assert this p select signal which is associated with our slave too let's say if the master wants to communicate with slave 1 then the master is going to assert this p select signal which is associated with our slave 1 so using this p select the master is going to select whichever slave it wants to communicate with using this p select signal and it is of one bit width next we have p enable signal and it is of also one bit width it is basically used to differentiate between the address and data phase it is high during the data phase and for example let us see let's say this is our master for the master we are going to have very first signal which is our p clock and one more signal is uh, p address which is output to our master which is an address signal and one more signal which is an output to our master is p select x indicates we can have select 0 select 1 select 2 select 3 depending upon which slave we, know, we need to select that particular uh, x value will be given and next is p enable so coming to this p enable signal we already know that in ahb protocol we have two phases for a transaction to be completed the transaction will happen in basically two phases one is address phase and another is data phase now in the case of your address phase the master is going to provide the address signal and it is also going to assert all the control signals to be valid Uh, so they should not be in an unknown state the master keep uh, the master will assert a respective values to them in the address space and the master is also going to provide the address for uh, address for communication now in the data phase the master is going to provide the data which is associated with that particular address and the slave is going to receive that particular data same like that in apb protocol also we are going to have two phases one is address phase and another is data phase now to the slave to let to know whether which phase is going to happen the master is going to use a signal which is known as p enable signal if 
P enable signal is equal to zero, then the slave will come to know that it is an address phase. The master is performing an address phase. And if P enable is equal to one, the slave will come to know that the master is performing a data phase. So depending upon your P enable signal, the slave will come to know that if your P enable is equal to zero, the slave will come to know that the master is performing a address phase. And if P enable is equal to one, the slave will come to know that the master is performing a data phase. So depending upon your P enable signal, we are going to decide what type of phase we are going to perform. The master is going to perform. So master is going to tell the slave using this P enable signal and coming to P write signal. This also we know this is similar to your H write signal in your AHB protocol. So this P write signal, if it is equal to one, then it is a write transfer. And if it is equal to zero, it is a read transfer. So the slave is going to tell the so the master is going to tell the slave using this P write signal. If your P write is equal to one, if your P write is equal to one, then the slave will come to know that the master is going to perform a write operation. And if P write is equal to zero, then the slave will come to know that the master is expecting a read operation. So the slave will uh, perform its operation accordingly. So depending upon your P write direction, if it is a write operation, then the direction of the data will be from master to slave. If it is a write operation, then the data direction will be from master to slave. And if it's a, and if your P write is equal to zero, then it is a read operation. Then the data direction will be from slave to master. So depending upon your P write signal, whether you are going to perform write operation or whether the master is going to perform a read operation will be decided. And coming to next type of signal, which is our PW data. So PW data, that is nothing but data to be written to the slave only valid during the write cycles and like same to your similar to your HW data in your AHB protocol similar to your HW data in your uh, <coughs> AHB protocol here we are going to use PW data and depending upon the bus width it can be 32 bit or it can be 64 bit or it can be uh, 16 bit okay so depending upon your PW data so using your PW data bus the master is going to perform a write operation so using your PW data bus the master is going to perform a write operation and the slave is going to receive the data using your PW data bus. And coming to next type of signal and this P strobe we are not going to discuss in our uh, AHP protocol also we have skipped this particular strobe signaling part that we can discuss after completing entire protocol discussion. And next one is P ready signal. This P ready signal is also similar to your H ready signal. This P ready signal is also similar to your H ready signal in your AHP protocol. So that's why we are recommending you to once please learn AHP protocol so that APP protocol will be a simple task you to understand. Now let's say this is your master and this is your slave and let's say your master needs to communicate with your slave. So the master first it is going to sample this P ready signal. This P ready signal is going to check whether your slave is ready for any type of communication. It can be a write transfer or it can be a read transfer. First of all, the master is going to sample this P ready signal. If this P ready signal is equal to one, then the master will come to know that the slave is ready for the transfer. And if this P ready signal is equal to zero, then the master will come to know that, okay, the slave is not ready for the transfer. So depending upon your P ready signal, we are going to know that whether the master is ready for any type of transaction or the master is not ready for any type of transaction. So we are going to sample this P ready signal. And next is PR data. Now, so we have seen this PW data in our write operation. And if the master is going to perform a read operation, then using this PW data signal, using this PR data signal, the master is going to read the data from the slip. So in our AHB protocol also, we have something as HR data. And in our EPB protocol also, we are going to have this PR data if the master wants to read the data from the slave, we are going to use this PR data and we are going to read the data from the slave. And coming to P slave error. So it is of one bit width and it's an optional signal. If this P slave error is equal to one, then the master will come to know that there is an error in the transfer. And if P slave error is equal to zero, then it means the master will come to know that there is no error in the transfer. So if this P slave error is your input to your master and the slave is going to provide this particular signal. 
So finally, let's say if this is your master and this is your slave, we are going to have pre-clock. and p address pw data and uh, p select p enable and for the input we are going to have p ready and we have pr data and we have p slave error so these are being given by your slave and these signals are given to your slave so this is these are the interface signals which are associated with our apb master and apb slave so that's all about this particular session where we have introduced to apb protocol and we have seen what do you mean by an apb protocol and how AHB protocol signals are transferred into APB protocol signals using a bridge and we have seen what is master, what is slave and what are the signals which are associated with your master and what are the signals which are associated to your slave and the direction of the signals with respect to your AHB with respect to your master and what are the directions of your signals with respect to your slave. Now in the next session what are we going to do is how we are going to perform write transfer and how we are going to perform read transfer and uh, what is the slave error this and all things we are going to discuss in our next session so that's all about this particular video if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about vlsi and i want feedback on this particular session if you want any improvement or if you want any other concept or i want uh, what is your exact feedback on this particular session so that we can improve ourselves in our upcoming videos yes so that's all about this particular video. Thank you.